If you're like me, you just bought yourself a Chamberlain Smart Garage and you notice that the instructions are very vague, if any at all. In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step on how to install the garage door opener. There's going to be timestamps so you can skip and come back whenever you need to. So let's go ahead and start off with step one. So step one is going to be a very important step. What you're going to want to do is look on the box or look up online how long the actual garage door is going to be fully assembled. Then what you're going to want to do is measure yours and make sure that it's going to fit because on mine, it was a little bit longer than the original one I had and I have to move the brackets back just like you can see right here they were in the middle of this beam I had to move them to the back of the beam so make sure you measure before you even start to assemble here we are step two which is going to be the easiest part of the whole assembly you're going to put the rods together and you want to look at the stickers because it's going to tell you exactly which way to put them in now when you insert it the tabs need to be facing down they should not be facing up next you're going to want to slide this onto the rail itself step three you're going to take the very end which is the motor mount and you're gonna need a hammer I use the rubber hammer you can get a metal one just be careful when you're banging it in you don't want to bend anything you just put it at the end of the rail make sure it's the correct end and then just bang it in there and it should lock into place so step four what you're gonna want to do is get the actual garage motor mount unit itself you're gonna want to turn over it there's going to be screws that you need to unfasten you're gonna have to have a half inch socket to do this or a wrench but a socket is gonna be the quickest and fastest way go ahead and undo those bolts now that you have the bolts taken out you're going to take the end of the motor mount rod that you just hammered in you're going to place them the hole should line up go ahead and put those on and tighten them up now in step five you're going to want to go ahead and grab the belt you're going to want to take the side that has the hook trolley side on it you're going to run it through the end of the rail and kind of pull a little bit of slack i want to make sure the grooves on the belt are facing inside towards the rod not outside toward the wall that's very very important because if you don't you're gonna have to take it all the way back off now step six you're going to take your screw your lock nut your lock washer and your nut and this the plastic circle right here you're going to insert it at the end of the rod where you just put your belt in put in your bolt your lock nut your lock washer and your nut and go ahead and tighten that up as much as you can step seven you're gonna take this little bar right here insert it into the hole and then you're gonna take your hook trolley and you're going to attach it on there just like this and you're gonna take the other end of the belt and wrap it around the groove sprocket on the motor itself and make sure that it lines up in the grooves nice and then bring it all the way back around to where you just insert the hook trolley step eight you're going to grab the master link spring and you're going to unscrew it then you're going to slide the screw through the hole right here and hand tighten it and you want to make sure there's going to be a little bit of play once you do that on the other end of the belt you're going to notice there's two holes like a bike chain you're going to put the one end on there and and then there's a little link right here what you're going to do is you're going to put it on and you're going to slide it over to lock it in place now i did use a flathead screwdriver this seemed to work okay once you have that nice and secure the belt should be completely around the motor mount and the garage rod securely now now believe it or not step nine was the hardest part for me to actually do what you're going to do is you're going to need a wrench and a flathead screwdriver the wrench we're going to release the spring which is going to release the tension to make everything hold nice nice and tight now you're gonna take the wrench and put it on where the nut is at now the screwdriver there's little grooves in here that you're gonna have to pry it in there and then start to unloosen the spring to release the tension now this took me quite a few tries once I got it lined up right it was able to open up you'll notice the spring will open and you are all set to go this was the best way that I was able to figure out how to do it and you will come back to this part later because once everything is assembled you're gonna tighten this up to make the belt a little bit tighter so you will have to make some adjustments once it's all said and done because the belt might sag a little bit more and you might need to tighten it up but that will be for later on at the end now step 10 on the motor mount itself you're going to see there's three screws right here you are going to unscrew those with your screwdriver and you're going to take this plastic cap and you're going to put it over that's going to cover the, the sprocket and the belt itself to make sure that it's secure once you put the plastic cap back on go ahead and screw it down hand tight do not tighten it too much because you will crack the plastic and you don't want to do that hand tight and then we're going to move on to step 11 which is going to require two people or really tall ladders so since i only had one person i only had myself i got a six foot ladder and what i did is i put the motor mount 
on top of a pad very carefully, laid that up there, and put the other end on the four foot ladder. Now these brackets that I did have to move to install the motor mount itself, tighten them up. I pre-measured the width of the garage door opener and mounted them, but I did leave them slightly loose. So when I go to lift up the garage door opener, as you can see here, I'm able to put the screws inside and hand tighten them to make sure that I'm on there. And because I didn't tighten everything too much, I'm able to spread it open or close it to make sure that it does fit very well. Once that's done and I know it fits good, I'm going to go ahead and tighten everything up nice and snug. Now in step 12, what I did is I have a three foot level. And what I did is I put the level on the garage rod itself. I got it nice and level and made sure it was straight. Then I took the mount that comes with the garage door opener and I made sure it was level and then I marked my hole. Once my holes were there, I put the rod to the side and I went and got my ratchets and I grabbed the lag bolts that it came with the kit and I went in and tightened that in all the way. Then I made sure it was level. One quick note with doing that you want to make sure that there is some kind of wood backing there you can see I have like a little 2 by 4 wood if you do not have any wood you're gonna to want to install something to make sure that it is supported and is not going to fall off because of all the movement of the garage door open step 13 you're gonna take this little eye bolt and where you just put the mount against the wall you can see on the on the garage rod there's a hole the pin is gonna go through the mount through the rod to the other side then there's this little circle clip that you're going to wrap in inside the hole at the very bottom to make sure that it's locked in and secure and it's not going to come out. Now step 14, since we have the garage door up and mounted, we just want to go back and make sure that we have all the bolts, nuts, everything tightened down as they should be. So we can make sure that we can start working on this thing without anything falling off the wall. Step 15, you're going to grab the other mount. This is actually going to mount on the garage door itself. Now mine was able to line up with the existing hole, but if yours is not, just make sure you measure, line it up, make sure it's level it does include the screws and you go ahead and screw that in make sure it's nice and tight you're going to go to right here where the release rope is and you're going to take this little rod then you're going to grab the little pin and you're going to insert it through this hole you're going to take that little circle lock in you're going to put it through the hole and twist it to lock that arm in it will swing then on step 17 you're going to get the l shaped looking bracket there's going to be two bolts two washers and two nuts for it. at the end of the bar right here you're going to take that L bracket and you're going to mount them at the very bottom of the brackets to make sure the two bottom holes line up and I would put them hand tight for now because depending on your garage you might have to adjust it and you don't want to keep tightening it all the way down and unloosing it then once you have those hand tight you're going to grab the other eyeball and you're going to insert this to the part you mounted onto the garage door it's the same thing one in through the side of the mount through the L shaped bracket other side of the mount little circle put that in there and you're good to go on that portion of it now I would just do a quick test just by yourself opening and closing Closing the garage door to make sure that it looks like it's going to open and close smoothly. If it does, go ahead and tighten up those bolts on that bracket that we just installed. Make sure it's nice and snug and then you're good to go. You're going to be installing the actual garage door opener on your wall. The kit does come with its own wiring, but I was able to use the existing. You're just going to need a Phillips screwdriver for that. If you flip it over, you're going to see that it has a color code on it. You're going to correlate that with the wires that you see. Just match it for whatever color it tells you. Then you're going to want to find an area where you can screw it into the wall. Once you put the screws in, you can go ahead and mount it on and you are good to go. You have officially installed the garage door opener itself. Here we are in step 18. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the mounts that are going to mount on the garage door rail. And this is where our sensors are going to be. You're going to need to make sure you have a level and the direction said to mount it six feet from the bottom of the floor. So I used a level which has numbers on it so I could tell where six inches is at. Do one side, go on the other side and make sure it's six inches. They just clip on and then once you do that, or off to step 19. Step 19, we are going to install the motion sensors for the garage door opener. The existing wires were placed in the drywall, so I was still able to use those. So I just connected and used the existing wiring itself. But the motion sensors in this kit come with a really long wire that you can use. You're just going to have to staple it to the garage door opener that you just installed. And if you're going to do that, run into that and then we'll go ahead and move to step 20. We are almost to the finish line. We have the garage mounted completely onto the door and to the wall. We've mounted and installed the wiring to the actual garage door opener. We've placed the brackets on the rail and we've installed the sensors. Now all we have to do is connect the wiring. In the back of the garage door opener, I can tell you what wires go where just by the color code that you see on the back. Once those are all in and good to go, now you can test the garage door opener, open it up, close it, and then after that would be the next part of getting it calibrated to open and close exactly how you want it. Your garage door is installed that you can go ahead and start enjoying 
enjoying it just like I am. I'm gonna go ahead and open it for you and close it so you guys can hear and see how quiet it really, really is. And I also want you to listen to yours before you put the new one in and just remember why you're changing. So here is up. If you guys found this video to be helpful, make sure you smash that like button and drop a comment below and let me know if this was helpful or not. And if you have not done it already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support the channel, grab yourself an Even Vibes t-shirt. I will leave it in the link below. Thank you guys for tuning in as always, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.